I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify. Lord with me and let us exalt his name together you may be seated in the presence of the Lord You're giving honor tonight to the spirit of the living God I want to thank personally the members of the ark but I want to say specifically to Pastor C. Elijah and Pastor James Bronner thank you both for your warm reception I uh, came in last night and I was so excited about being here I ran into Pastor C. Elijah in the hall and I couldn't even think of his name. <laughs> All I could say is, how's life treating you? <laughs> he didn't know if I knew him or not, you know? Uh, I say my special thanks for my brother and my friend, Nathaniel, for last. He said some things tonight, and I hope I don't disappoint y'all. <laughs> I just want to know where he got all that from, you know. <laughs> oh, thank God for friends and lies, you know. <laughs> I'll return the favor one day. <laughs> it's an honor. To, to be here tonight, and I do give honor to the shepherds of this flock and to First Lady Simone Bronner. God bless you. Uh, there are, I want to say thank you also to uh, Evangelist E.J. Hicks. When, didn't he bless us last night? Amen. Mm -hmm. I thank you for setting the bar. You might have set it a little too high, but you know. <laughs> I am honored tonight to have my wife with me. And my wife is a funny character. She uh, got back to the hotel last night and I told her when when we were coming, I said, you know, part of the routine is that the wife has to sit in the pulpit with the pastor. And she said, mm, I ain't going up there. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so last night when uh, Evangelist Hicks called for his wife to come, I said, see there, I told you, she's got to go there. <laughs> she said, you better tell me not to call me up there. <laughs> So last night we got back to the hotel and uh, I wanted to spend just a minute in the Word just to kind of refresh myself. No matter how often you get up here to preach, if you don't stay close to God, you're just out there. And I, I just don't want to be out there. So, so she, I'm, I'm laying in bed and I'm reading my commentary and she comes out of the bathroom, she says, Alfonso, now I got this from my daddy. You don't want to be bothered, you just don't say nothing, right? So, so I didn't say a thing. Alfonso! Alfonso, you hear me? I said, what, Shirley, what? 
did you send anything down there to Nathaniel for, for him to read? I, I didn't say a thing because I'd have lied if I'd have told her, yeah, you know. <laughs> and I'd be dog if he didn't get up and read what I sent, you know. <laughs> But I'm thankful for my wife. I'm reminded of, I said she's a peculiar character. I, I pastor a Presbyterian church and they call us the chosen frozen or the frozen chosen, you know. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't put y'all to sleep tonight, but you know. Uh, but my wife, my wife is, is, is a, kind, a kind of peculiar person, and, and, and in the Presbyterian church, the polity is a little different from Baptist churches and a little different from, uh, uh, a little different from non-denominational. So every year they come in and they want to evaluate how you're doing that kind of thing, and uh, if you haven't been a pastor, or if you are a pastor, you, you will relate to this. And I had my leadership. They send one of the big guys over to interview you. You're not even in there. But the people were raking me over the coals so bad. Finally, the man said, look, if he is a jackass, he's y'all jackass, so y'all keep him. <laughs> true story, true story, I, I wouldn't tell you So I wouldn't say that about my wife, but she's my wife, right? <laughs> I didn't say that, no, I didn't say that. She's my wife. And I love my wife. I'll get that. Let's get that. Shirley, Shirley, will you just stand and say hello to, uh, just stand and say hello. Will you please? See what I, didn't I just tell y'all? Didn't I, didn't I? <laughs> I'm not going to take up a lot of your time. I do have a couple more things I want to say. I usually preach about three hours, but, you know, I'm going to take I, um, there's some very special people here tonight, uh, in addition to all of you. Um, there is some folk who drove up from Savannah this afternoon to, to be here with me tonight. And one person holds a very special place in my heart. Now, I'll tell you about that in a second, but Reverend Eddie Jackson and his wife, Lorraine, and their mother-in-law, uh, Lawyer Bolden. We all just stand and say hello. <laughs> there is uh, one other person who knows me better than anybody in this whole world. And I'm especially happy because every step of this journey, this individual has been there with me from the day I was born. He was there when I got married. When I did my initial sermon. When I got ordained. When I got married again. <laughs> He's been there. He, in his own right, is a powerful, powerful person. There's a story I'll tell you real quick. I'm going to preach in a minute. There was a botanist, and he loved flowers. And he saw a very special specimen of a flower, very unique, very rare. And it was just over a cliff. He couldn't reach it, but he really wanted the specimen. So a little farm boy comes along and he says to the farm boy, he says, can you help me get this specimen? He says, I have a rope. He says, I'll tie you securely and if you just go over the cliff a little bit, I'll hold the rope as you retrieve the specimen. Little farm boy says, sir, I'll be glad to help you, but just wait here for a minute. I'll be right back. And so he goes away, and, and the botanist is, 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 is waiting and waiting, and, and finally he comes back, and he has another man with him. And he says to him, he says, sir, I'll be happy to, to go over and get this specimen for you. 
says, but I just have one request. It says, my father, whom I brought with me, has to hold the rope. My father, 93 years old, the Reverend Ellis Wood Sr., is here tonight. Will you stand? <laughs> If my mother were here tonight who sleeps the long sleep of death, right about now she'd reach over and she'd say, son, make me proud. My friend, Reverend Hoke Smith, probably say something like, preach the word. And I intend to do all of that tonight, but I do intend to take my time. If you have your Bibles, if you would turn with me to the Gospel of John, Gospel of John, fifth chapter. Gospel of John, fifth chapter, beginning at verse one. I failed to acknowledge the matriarch of this great family, Mrs. Bronner. I think I saw you earlier, and let me extend my greetings to you tonight. God bless you. Those who are able, if you will please stand in honor of the reading of God's holy word. The Gospel of John, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. This is the New King James translation. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever, else, whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made whole? The sick man answered, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Arise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was, was made well, took up his bed and walked. Hallelujah. Brothers of the word, when the voice of God is heard, brothers of the word, there's a word from God for everyone. Brothers of the word, because brother, you need the word. 